In the last video we started our journey with programming, and also added a force to our ball, so it just move along the z-axis. In this video we will make our player move. So, if you wanna make a game in Unity, this video is pretty much essential. So let's go. Right now a primary issue with this is that, our player just starts rotating and jumping. One way to fix this is to go to the player, find the rigid body, and add some constraints. We could for example freeze the rotation on the x-axis, and that should result in smooth movement. However, we don't want our sphere to be able to rotate, when it collides with something. Let's uncheck that. And instead let's create a physics material. The reason for the sphere jumping around is that, by default there's a friction between the sphere and the ground. By adding a physics material, we can choose how much friction we want. Let's right click on the project, go create, and then select physics material. We can rename this to something like slippery. And we can set both the dynamic and the static friction to zero. Then drag this onto our ground, and you can't see it is being applied. But if we go ahead and select our ground, we can see that the material under the box collider, is now set to slippery. Now we select the player, and double click on our player movement script. On this line, we are adding a forward force of 2000, and then of course multiplied with time dot delta time. However, it would be really really neat, if we were able to modify this value in the inspector, instead of just hard coding this into the line. To do that we use variables. In C sharp, variables are like containers. It can hold a value inside it. To turn 2000 into a variable, so we can edit in the inspector, we'll go up here and create some space. We'll write public float, because we want a number that we can fine tune with decimal places. Then we need a name, in our case we could do something like forward force. And also we can set a default value, in our case we'll set that to the same 2000. Then we can substitute this number with forward force. So we'll just take the forward force here, and paste it down there. And if we now save and go back to Unity, we'll see we are now able to adjust the forward force in the inspector. We could set it to 4000, or to 1000 even if when we are playing. It's time to have a look at doing some player input now. The fundamental thing to understand when doing player input, is the if statement. Make some room beneath our add force method here. We can write, if, then open and close the parentheses, and then open and close the curly brackets. This is the basic structure of an if statement. If statement allows you to only execute code, if a certain condition is met. This is where you put your code. And inside this two parentheses, is where you put your condition. If we want to check if the player is pressing a certain key on the keyboard, we'll type input.getKey, and here we'll also open and close parentheses. 
and in here in quotation marks, we write the key we want, in our case we want D to the right. And now everything we put inside of this two curly brackets, it's only called when user presses D. And let's say RB dot add force, and in this case we don't want to add a force on the Z axis, we want to do it on the X. Meaning right and left. So we can go in here, and add some numbers say 500 on the X, 0 on the Y, and 0 on the Z. Remember to close it up with semicolon. Of course we want to multiply 500 with time dot delta time. Now save this, and go to the editor. I just set the forward force to pretty low. So our sphere doesn't go flying off. We can hit play, and we should see that, when we hold down D our sphere moved right. Now we go back and add this to the other direction. To do this we simply copy our code, and paste it right beneath. Instead for check D key, we check for A, and change 500 with minus 500. Save this and go back to Unity, and hit play. We will see that we can move our sphere with the keys. Now to do the same for the side force, and also able change it in the inspector, do the same as the forward force. For that add a new public variable say side force here, and set its value to 500. And exchange the value 500 with side force in this two places. Save it, and now you can change the side force in the inspector tab. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.